search and rescue. Call if you need help. I'm Nat Bowditch. I'm a volunteer with the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Search and Rescue Team in Northern California. A while back, we got a mutual aid call to help find a lost hunter in the Sierras. This was rough terrain at about 8,000 feet. And as the first day drew to a close, none of the six mountain rescue teams had found any signs of the hunter. With daylight fading, our team walked out on a ridge to call and look for the hunter. We heard a faint response to our call, but thought it could be a bird or perhaps another search team in the distance. At that point, I wished we had something to amplify the sound we were hearing, and I thought of parabolic microphones, which are commonly used to amplify sounds in televised sports, like football. Fortunately, it was the hunter. He climbed up on the ridge and we led him back to his family. But I didn't forget about the parabolic microphones. A generous company loaned us three parabolic microphones and we conducted a study to answer the following question. Is a parabolic microphone superior to unaided hearing in detecting and comprehending hidden callers at various distances. We set up a listening post in an open field. We then placed eight callers at distances from 300 to 2,500 meters away, or more than a mile and a half. The callers were scattered in all directions and hidden. In random order, the callers were asked to call the name of a state in a loud but sustainable volume, which we calibrated. Alabama. The listeners, both those with the parabolic microphones and unaided hearing, wrote down the direction of the call and the name of the state being called. Each time we cycled through the eight callers in the field, we changed the order of the callers and the names of the states each one was calling. We got a total of 192 caller microphone data points and 443 caller unaided listener data points over six hours. Analyzing the data, we found that unaided listeners could detect and comprehend more than 50% of callers out to 1,200 meters, but the parabolic microphone more than doubled this to 2,500 meters. The study was published in the journal Wilderness and Environmental Medicine. The full study is available for free through a link on our website. It shows that in favorable condition and terrain, a searcher with a parabolic microphone doing a single 360-degree arc should be able to detect more than 80% and comprehend more than 50% of callers in an area of more than 20 square kilometers. We now use a parabolic microphone in searches where a subject may be responsive. The parabolic microphone is going to be most effective when there is open air between the subject and the microphone. Teams should try to find prominent places with wide fields of coverage. Teams should try to choose locations not only for broad coverage, but to minimize other sounds such as cars, planes, and other things that might interfere with the sensitivity of the microphone. Once a good location is chosen, the next step is to elicit a call from the missing subject. We use a megaphone. As soon as this call is complete, the microphone operator will then sweep a 90-degree arc, hoping to hear a response. Our practice is to do two 360-degree sweeps, 90 degrees at a time. When these sweeps are complete, we report the results to management. In choosing sequential locations, try to get overlapping coverage. Remember, if there's a ridge between you and the subject, the sensitivity of the microphone is significantly diminished. Full-scale search and rescue operations may contain many resources, such as ground teams, air resources, canine teams, and others. Each resource has its strengths and limitations. The main limitations of the parabolic microphone are, it requires a subject to respond to calls, and noise from wind, rain, vehicles, aircraft, and other sources diminish its effectiveness. 
If a parabolic microphone team is being deployed at a search, it might be better to use the team at night or at first light while other teams are being briefed. There are several reasons for this. First, winds tend to be lower at night and very early morning. Wind diminishes the sensitivity of the parabolic microphone. Second, helicopters, ATVs, and ground teams will not be making noise in the area. If a microphone team can conduct sweeps from several locations ahead of a noisy full-scale search, they might be able to locate a responsive subject or, at a minimum, be able to let searchers know that a subject in that area is likely unresponsive. If the subject is a child or someone else who may be too scared or confused to respond to calls, management may ask a family member to be the voice on the megaphone, if safe. Once a full-scale search is underway in a given area, management should consider moving the parabolic mic team to search other areas that might be the focus of subsequent operational periods. The microphone team won't be competing with the noise of the full-scale search and can give management some confidence that a peripheral area does not contain a responsive subject. Use of a 26-inch parabolic microphone greatly enhances a search team's ability to find a responsive subject. Consider requesting a team as early as possible when a subject is most likely to be responsive. I'm Nat Bowditch. Thank you for watching.